Hello, Vernon. Oh, hello, Carl. Oh, hello, Vernon. Um, maybe I, I have a, uh, have, I think I have a follow-up question regarding what Helen just said and what you spoke about. Yeah. Yes. And maybe you can become, can explore together what is meant with timelessness. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, let me explain it like it where I'm coming from. I know sometimes the, in the scripture the the example is mentioned with the shruti, yeah, the note which runs through yeah. an experience, and you've also used it so it's not so long ago. So I know you're very well familiar with it. Yeah, but you know because the shruti runs through time, it cannot in itself be timeless. Yeah. So my reflection is that I need to step one step back. Yeah. Yes. However, if I do that, then there's nothing left other than what you've been referring to. Yeah. Yes. Is that would you? Is this um, is this a correct uh, way to proceed? Right, you are perfectly on the good way. <laughs> uh, yes. The Shruti, after all, it's a picture. But the Shruti doesn't change, and yet it's present in every part of the music. The Shruti, for those who don't know that, it's in the Indian classical music, there is a basic note that is played. It's uh, either played with the tampuram, with a four-stringed instrument that remains. Uh, it's not played with the second hand, but it goes through the play just... <laughs> or with the shruti box, that is just... And on top of that basic note, the beautiful music is built up. And the shruti remains the same and is in every part of the play present. Everything else changes the, the whole time. That's why it can be used as an image, but an image is always an image. <laughs> now, what is timeless? The present. And the present is not a point in time because if we put the finger in time to the now, it's already past. It's never present. It never stays present. <laughs> but you can connect with that sense of presence. And however crazy, whatever goes on in time and space, that sense of presence is there. Prior to time, prior to the external experience. It's not definable because it's again that truth we have been talking about with Helen that cannot be expressed and yet we can consciously bring the attention back because it's always there. You are that. That is first. And then out of that the possibility for all the other experiences emerge that sense of presence that we are touching when we say I. First, without a thought, when you say I, immediately your attention touches something so totally familiar and yet you cannot put a handle on it. You cannot say it's like this or like that. And then we start to think about it and we start to think about me and the story, and then I know so many things. But prior to that, there is just that sense of present. And if you look back in your life story, in your memories, then you remember Carl 10 years younger, and 20 years younger, and 30 years younger, and as a little boy. And in all that story, this image of Carl changed continuously. The body changed, the mind changed, the intellect changed, the relationship changed, the, the feelings changed, everything changed all the time. But in all those times, 
you can remember when you say hi there is that something which is not changing throughout that whole story which you cannot say that you know it because you cannot define it but you cannot say you don't know it because it's the most familiar <laughs> that is timeless it's prior to time that sense of presence out of that the whole experience emerges including the current of time and space and it's not difficult to touch it's not difficult to connect everybody knows it's the most familiar but we have the tendency to be so absorbed in everything else that we totally overlook it but prior to that that sense of presence that which you are touching when you say i without starting a definition without words without thoughts but just i immediately that familiar sense of presence is there it, you cannot nobody can possibly deny it <laughs> because it's there and we know it best by being it not by defining it this is timeless it's prior to time the experience of time and space emerges out of that sense of presence the i i'm experiencing as a person is just a reflection from that and we have the tendency to totally identify with that reflection but still everybody every now and then types in the subconscious in the in the consciousness prior to the mental conscious and draws the life the nourishment the beauty out of that but it's so fleeting and so not spectacular that we completely overlook it but there is nobody who is disconnected from that without that the whole experience is not there even if we are screwing up our experience and being full of tensions and doing bad things and still that purity is there prior to that it cannot be touched it cannot be spoiled and without that no experience could be possibly there so it's more than the shruti the shruti is an image that, that gives us an idea but the, you can also play the melody without playing the shruti <laughs> in the music but without this primordial sense of presence no other experience is possible it's first <laughs> all our job is somehow simply convince our mind to make it interesting enough <laughs> to bring the attention back to that instead of always getting lost in our stories so perfectly all right as you described the your totally looking in the right direction some sometimes people refer to it as pure subjectivity yeah yes yeah would you say because it's pure sub subjectivity that faith and conviction need to come together to have a strong conviction and at the same time a strong trust a strong faith something like a blend of that first is a conviction and as you become more familiar the faith grows automatically they do come together <laughs> it's not that eventually you are so totally convinced of something that after that you can say now i have it because i'm totally be without a doubt convinced <laughs> the conviction may help to stop always wandering off in all kinds of directions but then along with that increased conviction comes the direct awareness which is the uh, which expresses it in faith 
then you cannot doubt it, not because simply you are convinced, because of being, of knowing by being, <laughs> not by conviction. <laughs> right, you can say they somehow merge, they have to cope together. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. You are welcome. One, one thing as an as an add-on from what you, because when you spoke before of the understanding, yeah. Yes. Um, I've read a, a book uh, of some books by an, um, a Danish man called Shunyata who lived many years in India, right. and he's of the his, he always called it the inner standing, not the understanding, the inner standing. Right. Because right. You have to understand. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> the English word is very good. What we are calling understanding is sort of you're standing under something and get a grasp on it. And uh, Shun, Shunyata's uh, expression of inner standing is more to the point. <laughs> yeah. He used to be here with Ramana Shunyata. That's right. right. That's, do you also know him? I, well, long ago, once I read the book about him. <laughs> yes. That's yeah, right. yeah. But he was a very beautiful being. <laughs> he was, yeah. Right. Thank you, Werner. You are most welcome. Hari Om. Hari Om. <laughs>